Thank you, worship team. Listen, I've run sound for years. She's going to she keep singing. I've run sound for years. And um, you ever wonder sometimes when a pastor gets up and starts speaking and it's not in this moment right here, and then the worship team keeps kind of going? It's because they can't just cut the song off right there in the middle of the song. You understand know what I'm saying? All right, did y'all, did y'all know that? Um, and before we get started this morning, uh, first of all, I am not Pastor Dan, okay? He's got big shoes and, and uh and I'm going to let him walk in them, okay? And, uh, but we miss him. Him and Miss Gloria are out, uh, what is that? They're out west. I'll just say that. I'm not going to try to tell you where they're at, okay? But I, he did send me a picture last night, and it honestly looked like a postcard. Right? I don't know if he took a picture of a postcard, but he, he probably didn't. Pastor Dan won't do that. But he's literally, took me. he's at the Grand Canyon. I think it's the Grand Canyon. It's a big hole in the ground, and it's red. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying? So I don't, you know. But, uh, but it looks like he's standing like... <laughs> On the edge of it, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was like, I was like, Pastor, Dan, you need to back up, okay? You need to just take a step. It looks like you're too close. I don't think you need to be that close. I'm pretty sure there's a fence there or something. But it literally looks like he's standing like there's no fence in front of him. And knowing Pastor Dan, he might have like got curious and kind of went over the fence. And you know what I'm saying? But uh, anyway, they're out there having a great time. They're going to see the arches and the Grand Canyon, and and uh, they, they need they're they're enjoying themselves. And um, and I also want to say this this morning, fact, because I got the microphone this morning. Today's my mama's birthday. She's not here, okay? But she's on she's on Facebook like 22 hours a day, okay? So if you're friends with her. On Facebook, you can shoot her a happy birthday, okay? But uh, and tomorrow is my wife's birthday, right? Y'all give her. She is much younger than me. Um, I've been dating her since she was 15. I'm not gonna tell you how old I was, okay? So you will hold it against me, okay? But uh, she's not much older. Don't get me wrong. It wouldn't went weird like that. But uh, um, but anyway, so we've been married 23 years, and uh, tomorrow's her birthday, and I love her, and I get a chance to do that because I'm speaking today. So anyway, y'all tell her happy birthday tomorrow, okay? All right. Um, so let's get into the Word this morning, okay? Um, and I'm going to continue with what Pastor Dan's been going through, the, uh, the Beatitudes. I love the Beatitudes. Uh, I've, I've been through it many times. I've read it many times. How many of you just love reading through, listening to uh, the Beatitudes? And it's just, it's just good. It's, it's Jesus literally just sit down teaching, and, and you know, it is, it, it's just good stuff. It's qualities that we need in our life. But before we kind of go into that Beatitude, today we're talking about being humble, okay? So college football technically kicked off this weekend. I know a couple of teams played last weekend. Okay, we're not going to talk about that, okay? But, but it, it officially kicked off this weekend, and um. How many of you, some of you could care less about college football, okay? All right, but how many of you uh, have, have a T-shirt that, that you or hat or something or a tag on your car representing your favorite team? How many of you have paid tickets to go and watch that team before? I even paid tickets last year to go watch your team, okay? I'm just letting you know, okay? All right? And I was, I was a poser. I had a, I had a burgundy shirt on. It wasn't, it wasn't garnet and gold, but it was burgundy, okay? But it, um, Troy's shaking his head, okay? But yes, so I did that. Um, but, you know, we, we, we do that, okay? We, we're quick to, we're very fast to support our favorite teams. Why? Why? Because we take pride. Everybody say pride. We take pride in them, right? And we want people, why, why, why don't we wear the, the clothes and have the tag on the car? How many of y'all, we, people used to fly flags on their car. There'd be six flags on one car. Y'all remember them days, right? I remember when I first moved here, I would do that and, you know, I would get comments from y'all, okay, years ago, because my car would be sitting in the parsonage right there, you know. But, uh, but anyway, um, but we do that. We pay money to do all that because we have pride in our team. Like, we want, we want people to know I support Florida State. I support that other team in Florida, okay. I support Alabama, all right, or whatever, you know what I'm saying. So, but let's keep going. We don't, nobody supports Georgia, okay. I know there's a few Georgia fans here, but anyway, let's keep going. But we have fun with it. We take pride in it, but. That's where our pride has to stop. All right? Let's, let's talk about what the Word of God says about and humility this morning, but you can't talk about humility without talking about pride. Okay? Um, so pride is the enemy of God. Okay? Pride, pride breaks up unity. It, it is literally God can work with humility. Pride literally uh, creates separation because it, 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 you know, it points to me, you, and not God. And, and listen, if I'm doing my thing, you're doing your thing, you're doing your thing, then, and, and it, that means nobody's doing God's thing, right? That means nobody's doing God's thing. So, and, and pride is this. Pride lifts up me, 
Okay? All right, and listen, I, I know before you knew Jeffrey, Jeffrey was all about Jeffrey, okay, when he was a teenager before I fell in love with Jesus. And many of you have been there. Your testimony is that also. You cared a lot. I did everything I did as stupid as a teenager because I wanted to do what pleased me, and I, I, wanted, I wanted to lift me up. I wanted to be popular. I, I, I made every stupid decision because I hung out with this group of people. I committed this sin because cause that, cause I, wanted, I, wanted, I, wanted, I wanted to wear those nice clothes and those nice clothes. I wanted all that because I wanted people to see uh, me, right? I, I wanted to put the spotlight on me. I, I mean, you've done stupid decisions because you're trying to lift yourself up, right? All of us have, right? But listen, here's what, here's what self means, okay? Self means Satan, the S, Satan's exact location forever, all right? I read that this week. I love it. Satan's exact location forever. S-E-L, is that an acronym? Yeah, acronym, right? I got it right. I'm proud, right? Um, Alabama education, you know what I'm saying? But Satan's exact location forever. That's where that's where that's where the enemy likes to hang out is 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 is, uh, is lifting lifting this up, lifting me up. Everybody say lifting me up, right? And we got we got to fight against that every single day. We got to fight against that constantly. Don't don't look at somebody else in the room and say you need to listen this morning. Look at yourself this morning and say I need to listen this morning because pride pride creeps. And it creeps in, and, and sometimes we're prideful and we don't even know it. And it's not like we just wake up one day, it's like, man, I want to live a prideful life, you know, for this week. You know, uh, nobody does that. But, man, pride, it's just like any other sin, it creeps up. Particularly this morning, we're talking about that, okay? So the main verse, you know, Matthew 5, 5, God blesses those who, who's God bless? Those who are humble, for they will inherit the earth. God blesses those who, 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 who are humble. And I'm going to use Pastor Dan's definition. He's been using blessed. How many of y'all love blessings? Love to be blessed. Man, I, I, how many of you have seen blessings in your own life? We all have, right? And, and, and most importantly, God's blessings, right? That's kind of why, we, why I was talking about at worship this morning. Why when we went into a moment of worship, man, think about the blessings of God and the goodness of God that, what he, that he's poured out in your life, right? Think about that this morning. Think about that tomorrow morning. Think about that Tuesday morning. Think about that Wednesday morning. Listen, don't, don't, don't go a day of your life without, man, just thinking about the goodness of God and the blessings in your life. But, but in order to live a blessed life, one of the Beatitudes is you got, you got to have that quality of humility, right? It has to be there. Jesus was teaching us life qualities that we have to possess. And if we have them, listen, blessings are going to follow. He, he, he kind of just, he didn't kind of, he, he didn't make this hard to understand. He said, blessed are those who are humble, right? So in, in this morning, in the, in the, in the, in the Bible, we're going to talk about a guy named, you've heard about many times if you've been in church, maybe you're brand new to church this morning, you never heard about him. You can read about him in Second Chronicles chapter 26. His name is King Uzziah, Okay. I love people's names back then. King Uzziah. King Uz. Right? That sounds better. I don't know if they called him that, but anyway. But I would, I would have called him that. And listen, his, his father was the king, okay? And he, his father dies, and he becomes king at, of Judah at 16 years old. I mean, isn't it crazy how they did stuff back then? 16-year-old leading a group of people, God's people, at, as a, I mean, I, you know, remember how dumb you were at 16? You know, I mean, I remember those days, man, I've done, you know, I'm going to tell you everything I've done, but I did it, okay? And it, some, a lot of it wasn't good, okay? And, right, my son, is he in the room? He's here. Uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to call him out, okay? He's done, he's 17, so he's not there anymore, okay? All right? But uh, let's read. <laughs> Second Chronicles, I'm sorry, son, I'm not going to do that to you. Pastor's kids hate when their, pastor, their dad speak, so... Second Chronicles 26, 4 and 5. Let's read it, okay? He's, he's, he's been named king. He says, he did what was pleasing in the Lord's sight, just as his father, Amaziah. Let me just stop there, right? We learn a lot from our parents. Me being in youth ministry over 20-something years, 18 years here, parents, all right, your kids are watching you, every, everything you do, every detail, Right? All right, and, and, and what you do, what you do in, in, in a small amounts gives them, gives them permission to do in excess, right? Whether it's anger, whether it's drinking, whether it's label, we can label out the sins, whether it's language, whether we, we, we can name all the sins, but I'm just saying you, you carry the number one influence on, your, on your, your, your baby's lives. 
All right, I'm thankful for youth ministry and kids ministry and our Sunday school classes and life groups. And that's, they're, 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 they need to be there, but you, you are the number one influencer. And, and just remember that, okay? All right. So he did what was pleasing in the Lord's sight just as his father had done, Amaziah had done. And I'm going to do my best with the names, okay? All right. So don't come up to me afterwards and say that's not right because you may be wrong too, okay? All right. So Uzziah sought God. This is important. You need to get this. He sought God during the days of Zechariah. He didn't just listen to his father. He also had a prophet that God put in his life named Zechariah that he learned from, right? Another reason why, let me just stop there for a soapbox moment for a second. All right, he says, he says he, 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 Uzziah sought God during the days of Zechariah who taught him to fear God. All right, and man, listen, in, in humility, one of the first things, not even in my notes this morning, but I got to tell you this morning, to be living a humble life and to be, you've got to be teachable. I've got to be teachable. I've got to be, be able to sit under someone that, listen, that's been, that knows more, that's walked with God longer, and, and, and that's why you need a, a church family to, 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 to have someone, a pastor, even lead you or a Sunday school teacher, but we've got to always remain teachable, right? God puts people in your life, man. Don't ever say, I'm to that point where I need to be teaching. Right? I, I mean, me and Pastor Dan are teachers also, but man, and pastors, and God's called us to that, but man, we also got to be learning and growing and, 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 uh, and, and be teachable also, right? God give, God give Uzziah Zechariah. And it says, as long, as long as he, as the king, sought guidance from the Lord, he started out great. Right? He started at 16 years old and, and, and was king for 52 years. He was 68 years old when he, I, I did the math, and I think it's right, okay? All right? But is that right? He, was, he, he started out when he was 16, and he was 52 years old, 68, right? It's somewhere in there, okay? That's not a point, okay? Somewhere in there, all right? I'm just trying to make sure you all awake. If you do a math, you'll wake up, okay? You know what I'm saying? Or go to sleep. I don't know which one, okay? But he sought. It, he started out great. He sought the king. He sought guidance from the Lord. As long as the king sought guidance from the Lord, what did God give him? Success. Right? That's how he started out. Humility is built. It's a quality that we learn, right? It's not something that when you become a follower of Jesus Christ, that, that boom, his button mashed, and you become humble all of a sudden. It's a choice you have to make. It's something that we have to learn, right? We learn it from people. We learn it from people in the Word of God. We learn it from people in our lives. We learn it from the, through the Holy Spirit. We learn it through following Jesus' life. We're going to read Scripture here in a little bit. And it begins with me not, not doing my own thing, but seeking guidance from the Lord. That's how, just like Uzziah, just like Uzziah did. Humility starts with me seeking not, not my desires and not what I want to do, but seeking God's guidance. All right? We need his guidance in our life, especially in the world we live in nowadays, right? Second Chronicles 26, 7, 8 says, God, and listen, let's keep going. He becomes king, right? He, 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 he was doing everything right. He sought God's guidance. And then in Second Chronicles, it says, God helped him in his wars against the Philistines, his battles and the, with the Arabs of Gur, and his wars with the Meunites. The Meunites paid annual tribute to him. And then it says, his fame spread even to Egypt. For he had become very powerful. King Uzziah had become very powerful. All right? And that's good, good things happening isn't a bad thing, right? God gives good things. He wants good things to happen. He was seeking the Lord. Let's keep going. 2 Chronicles 26, 9 through 15. Uzziah, he, he's, he, he's, done, he's, he's, he's won battles. Uzziah built fortified towers in Jerusalem. And this is, you got a picture Remember before I go on. This is happening in the span of 52 years, right? Sometimes we read this a lot. I mean, he did a lot in that when he was a 16-year-old, right? But this is happening in the span of 52 years. He did all this in, in, a, in, a, in that span of time, right? Think about what you've done in 52 years, if you're that age. Lots happened in, in 52 years, right? What have you seen in change, the changes, things you've seen in 52 years, right? Think about that. Uzziah built fortified towers in Jerusalem at the corner gate and the valley gate and at the angle in the wall. He also constructed forts in the wilderness and he dug many cisterns. He was, man, he was smart because he just, he kept great herds of livestock in the foothills of Judah and on the plains. He was also a man. He loved the soil. He had many workers who cared for his farms. He had vineyards both on the hillsides, in the valleys. Man, he was successful wherever he planted, right? Whatever. Now, he was a great gardener, right? How many of you are horrible gardeners? Tasha, raise your hand, babe. Okay. All right. All right. We got a fig tree, man. We, we, how many figs we got off of, baby? Three? Four? Okay. All right. 
Uzziah had an army of well-trained warriors ready to march into battle unit by unit. Man, he, he was doing good. This army had been mustered and organized by Jeel. I don't know if that's right, but he was the secretary of the army and his assistant, Masai. They were under the direction of Hananiah, one of the king's officials, and these regiments of mighty warriors, they were commanded by 2,600 clan leaders. And his army consisted of 307,500 men and all elite troops. They were prepared to assist the king against any enemy. Man, he was doing great. Uzziah provided the army with shields, spears, helmets, coats of mail, bows, about said bows, and sling stones. And he built structures on the walls of Jerusalem designed by experts to protect those who shot arrows and hurled large stones. I love the details in this. He's trying to paint a point right here like, man, that Uzziah was going great, man. And God was giving the increase. He was seeking the Lord, right? His fame spread far and wide, for the Lord gave him marvelous help. And he became very powerful. All right? Is success a good thing or a bad thing? There's nothing, nothing wrong with success. Let me just say that to this morning, right? There's nothing wrong with being successful in finances and in and, and, and school or whatever you want to lay success. There's nothing wrong with God. God wants that. He started out well, right? He sought the Lord and God gave him ability, gave him, he, he, he used his, his wits. I mean, he was wise. I mean, uh, he gave him victories. There was a lot of increase during that time in the nation of Judah, right? But let's, let's keep, and this story starts out well, but it ends sad. And, and why, why are we talking about this morning? Because I don't want our story to end sad. I want us to finish well, right? I want us to finish, listen, with, with people living hum, humble lives, not, not lives with seeds of pride in it, right? Um, 2 Chronicles 26, 16 says, but when he had become powerful, it says he also became proud, which led to his downfall. He sinned against the Lord his God by entering into the sanctuary of the Lord's temple and personally burning incense on the incense altar. altar. And what he did, when he, listen, what, what he did sounds, if you just kind of read it and, and not understand the context of it, it doesn't seem that big of a deal. But if you go read the Old Testament about the details that God puts in the building of the temple of God, and man, he's got, he's got specific people he puts in specific places. He got specific uh, the, 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 the items in the temple go in a specific spot because, man, why is it so important? Because it's about the presence of God. It's about entering into the presence of God. And we had to get it right. He, he, he give us, he give us special, uh, specific details of how to do that, right? And, and, and King Uzziah, being the king, he knew that. Right? He knew he could, he knew that, 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 listen, that the priests were supposed to be the ones that went in and burned the incense at the altar. He knew that. But he went outside, and in a moment of failure, he went outside of God's plan. Right? And if you, I'm not going to read the rest of the story right here, but if you go read the rest of the story, it says, it says that 80 of those priests went in after him because he wasn't supposed to be in there. And listen, and they, and let, well, I, I can read part. It says, it's not right for you, Uzziah, to burn the incense to the Lord. That's for the priests, the descendants of Aaron, who have been consecrated to burn incense. Listen, he went outside of God's plan. He, 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 had, he had a moment where he became more important than God's plan. And can I just tell you this morning, that's not just King Uzziah, right? That's us if we're not careful. That's me and you if we're not careful. Again, don't, don't think who that person is more than who you need to think, think about you, right? And it might, you might not be in that place right now, but I can tell you right now, if you're like me, I still have a sinful nature. Right? I still have a nature or desire to sin, but I, 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 I've got help from it, and I'm saved from it by the blood of Jesus. But, man, but I, I still have to make decisions every day or to, to, to please God or to please Jeffrey. Right? And, and if you're with me, if you're, if, if you're realistic this morning, and it, that everybody has, still has that, right? Like Uzziah, how easy is it for us to be taken down by something just as simple as the sin of pride that nobody can see? It's not something you do out in the open. It's not something that, that, that you can get caught doing. It's something that, that's, that, that's, that's just between us and God. Now, people can see glimpses of it, but how easy is it for, is it for that sin to creep in, right? Now, 
Pride is a weapon often used by the enemy of, of our lives. It, and it might not be a shiny weapon. It's not a big shiny weapon. Like I said, everybody can see, but it is a weapon that causes destruction, destroys ministries, destroys, destroys families, destroys marriages, destroys churches, destroys, listen, friendships. And it, it, it's not something we talk about a whole lot, but man, Jesus says, right, I mean, in order to have humility, when we be blessed, I want to bless you, man. You got to live a life of, of, of humility, right? Pride lifts me up. Let's say it again. Pride creeps, creeps in, right? How, what's the enemy? He's a snake, right? He's, a, he's, a, he, he's sneaky. He's crafty, right? Pride always has to win. It's always it's competitive, right? It's competitive, right? And listen, again, I'm not telling you competitiveness is wrong, but when it comes to competing with one another about our lives, or you know, there's a competition going on with mine and your life between between heaven and hell, right? Right? And, and Jesus has got to win, man. And we, we, we can't live be competitive lives, and, and I, I can't always be right in my marriage, right? And my wife can't always be right, man. There, there has to be compromise. There has to be somebody saying, I'm sorry. There has to be somebody saying, uh, please forgive me. There has to be somebody saying, uh, I was wrong. Right? That, that's, that's us two guys. <laughs> right? Right? So, you know, I said it earlier. So if I have pride and you have pride and y'all have pride, so where's the unity at? Listen, to, there's no unity. And the Holy Spirit can't, can't accomplish the plan when, 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 with, with pride in the way. Right? Pride, pride is, is, is an infection, right? It is something, is something that, you know, what, what, what happens if you have an infection, right? If you don't deal with it, what, what does it cause? It spreads. It causes death. It, it doesn't just affect you. It can, it can affect other people. Um, and, and, you know, and, and we, we, it's, something, it's something that me and you, man, we, that, that the Scripture talks about a lot, and we don't like to talk about a lot because most of us, we, we might be carrying him, you know, and, 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 and when God convicts us of something, it's hard to say that's me. But I, can I just tell you, I've been there many times. I'm there, I, I'm there often if I'm not careful. So let's go, let's talk about humility now. Let's, we talked about pride, let's talk about humility. Martin Luther said this, God created, let this quote, God created the world out of nothing, and as long as we realize that we are nothing, he can still make something out of us too. God created a world out of nothing. And he wants, he wants to create in me what he needs for me, for his kingdom. All right? And, and listen, we got to let him. We got to let him. And pride stops that, right? Humility is, is important because in kingdom living, it's the highway that the light of Jesus can travel on. Right? It, pride closes that door for, for, for the Holy Spirit, for the light of Jesus to shine from your life to other people. And, and God's wanting to work in your life. He wants to work through your life. You, you mean, we're ambassadors for him. You know what? And pride, pride is just one of those barriers. If we have it, God, God can't work through that. But humility is that highway, man. That that's, why he, that's why it's important that, that the light of Jesus can shine on, can, shine, can, can travel on, okay? King, King Uzziah forgot that he was nothing. He forgot in his early years when he was seeking the Lord and the Lord was giving him the increase, right? He became confident and he started listening to those other voices. It says in Scripture, what does it say? It says he became proud. It became about, it became about Uzziah. That's a Uzziah victory. Uzziah built that. Uzziah, that was Uzziah's brain. That was Uzziah's sword. That was Uzziah's money that did that. And then he, he had a moment where, where, where like, you know what, I'm, I, I'm, I, God's got a plan, and, and I, I'm going to do my own thing, though. I, I'm powerful enough now that I'm going to do my own thing. His choices were made because of selfishness, right? And when we humble ourselves, it always lifts Jesus up instead of us, right? Um, humility is seen as weakness in society and culture, the world, the world that we live in. It's not something that, that there's commercials about and people are trying to put on display, right? But, but in, 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 in the kingdom of God, it's a, power, it's, a, it's a powerful quality. It's something that God can use. It's something, again, that, 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 
that mean if me and you are living it, really living it, then God, God can work. He, he can work some miracles. He, he can change some lives. He can, he can heal some marriages. He can heal some families. He can heal a, a community. He can, he can save a community, if because it brings unity. Humility brings unity. It brings people together for because it's about lifting Jesus up and not lifting me up. Man, if we're all lifting Jesus up, man, God can work. work he can work with that, right? My life. As a follower of Jesus, can't shine Jeffrey anymore. Jeff, Jeffrey, I had it whenever I became a follower of Jesus, and it, it, that's why we were baptized in water. It puts that on display that I'm laying my life down. You know what? That old, the old, the old man is gone. When I come up out of that water, it, it, it signifies life, right? That Jeffrey, Jeffrey, it, this ain't about Jeffrey, and I'm making it personal to me because 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 it happened to me, right? It ain't about it. it, 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 it Humility, living a life of humility just screams at it. It screams that I'm nothing, and it's all about Jesus. So humility always puts the spotlight on Jesus instead of me. It allows the, the attributes of Jesus to shine, and it gives an opportunity for the Holy Spirit to do his work. That's why humility is, is so important. It gives the Holy Spirit an opportunity to work and move through you. And pride is that thing that blocks it up, man. It's like a water hose. You squeeze it together, it blocks it up. The water can't flow. Man, pride could be that thing in your life, in my life. Something as simple as that could be something that God, man, and we, we've got to deal with it. Pride lifts me up. It creates isolation. That's what pride does. It creates isolation. It's about me. It's about me. And it chokes out what the Holy Spirit wants to do. Let's read James 4, 1 through 10 for a moment. What is causing, listen to this, what is causing quarrels and fights among you? Don't they come from evil desires at war within you? You want what you don't have, so here's what you do. Instead of asking me for it, you scheme and you kill to get it. You're jealous of what others have because you can't get it. So, again, instead of asking me, you fight and wage war to take it away from them. Yet you don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it. And even when you ask, you don't get it because your motives are wrong. You're asking in the wrong way with the wrong heart. You want what only gives you pleasure. You want what only gives you pleasure. He says, you adulterers. Don't you realize that friendship with the world makes you the enemy of God? I say it again. If you want to be a friend of the world, you make yourself an enemy of God. Do you think the scriptures have no meaning? They say that God is passionate, that the spirit he has placed within us should be faithful to him. And he gives grace generously, as the scriptures say, God opposes the proud. But who does he give that grace to? The humble. So humble yourselves before God. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Come close to God and God will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts for your loyalty is divided between God and the world. Let there be tears for what you have done. Let there be sorrow for, for, and deep grief. Let there be sadness instead of laughter and gloom instead of joy. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he'll lift you up. Right? That's what humility does. When we humble ourselves before the Lord, then he does the lifting. And when he, when, when he lifts us up, it puts him on the pedestal, right? If we're living hum, humble lives. Let's read, let's read that last part again. Let there be tears for what you've done. That's, let there be sorrow for deep grief. Let there be sadness instead of laughter and gloom instead of joy. Why, why this type of language? Is that what he wants? Is that what he's saying? That that's the kind of life I want you to live? He's like, no, you need to feel sorry. Listen, when, 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 when pride is being lifted up in your life, you need to be, and, he, and he's, what he's saying is we got to deal with it. Like, it, it can't, it, we can't hide it any longer. We can't say, no, that's not me. We got, we got to guard against it, right? He says, you, you, can't, you can't listen to the things of the world and do what, want, what you want, the, 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 the pleasures that you want, and fulfill those, and also on the same side, be a follower of me and listen to me. He's like, you got to make a choice. You can't live for the world and, and God here, right? But he's saying, what he's saying is you got you to deal with your selfish pride. He says, you won't, you won't, everybody say you. Or, I'm sorry, everybody say I. I want only what God gives. Everybody say me. Pleasure. If we're not careful, I'm not saying that's you this morning. I'm not saying it's me this morning. I'm saying we've got to be careful. 
He says, you adulterers, don't you realize that friendship with the world makes you enemy of God? I say it again, if you want to be a friend of the world, you make yourself an enemy of God. Humility wants what God wants, right? And the world wants you to seek what you want, and you can't want what God wants and what the world wants and, 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 and live that way. There's going to be confusion, and I can tell you, if you're not listening to God, pride's going to take over, right? So how is humility achieved? Let's, let's go back through this scripture we just read right here. All right? First thing, we've got to resist the devil. Right? And can I just remind you this morning, maybe you're new here this morning, you have an enemy of your life that desires heavily, man, heavily to speak to you. The God is always speaking to you. He's always speaking to me. And the question is whether we're listening. We've got to posture ourselves daily so we can hear from God and be led by God. But there's also the enemy of your life that's, that's, that's speaking also. Right? He, he, and he's relentless. Can I tell you that? He's relentless. Do you experience that in your life? I feel like he's relentless in trying to stop what God wants to do in my life. And you know what? But we have, we, we, we can resist. We don't have to choose to listen. Right? Don't listen to the enemy. He's crafty. He's sneaky. He's a snake. And he's been called the father of lies in Scripture. The father lies. Listen, he don't, he, it's not just, this is not something just obvious sometimes, man. But you got to understand the enemy, he, he with, with, with pride, he, it, it can creep and, and get in. And you've got to be aware of it. I've got to make ourselves aware of it. And listen, how do we do that? By getting as close to the Holy Spirit as God as we can. Right? We're talking about that in our life group also, right? Next thing we got to do is, uh, we got to come close to God. I kind of just talked about it. We got to lean into the whispers of the Holy Spirit because he, is, is, he desires to lead my life and your life. We're very valuable to him. Can I tell you, you're very valuable to God this morning. I don't care how you feel and what you've been through and the mistakes you've made, you're valuable. Right? And, uh, and, and God wants to, he wants to lead your life away from destruction, around destruction, sometimes through difficulties so, so, that, so that he can be lifted up in that. Right? He don't just always just, just take me around something. Sometimes I, ha I have to walk through something side by side with him, leading me, or, or him leading me, right? Because I might need to learn something in that situation, right? But, man, can I just tell you, we, we got to lean into God, man. Humility just don't happen by snapping your fingers. It's, draw, it's, it's like we sang the song earlier, draw, it's us drawing close to God and letting him lead our lives, right? And last thing we got to do, we got to wash and we got to purify. I mean, we got to repent of whatever it is, man. We, 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 we got to look at our sin and look at our life. And if it's even questionable, I got to say, God, I'm sorry. And I, I don't just say it with words, I say it with, 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 with decisions. I say it with a running away from whatever that is and running to God. Right? And again, if it's even questionable, man, I just probably need to stay away from it, right? Right? Wash and purify, repent of sin, turn away from it. Right? If, if, I'm, if I'm seeking it or if I'm doing it because of my pleasure, then, then what, what's, what's that word we've been talking about that's kind of creeping up in? Pride. If God says I need to stay away from it and, it, and, if I, I, and I need forgiveness, of it, I need, I need, I've got a God, Holy Spirit's always pointing out my, my sins that they are there. But I, I've got to acknowledge it and say, all right, God, I agree with you. And God, I know you're right. You're always right. And, and so I, I've got to deal with that. I've got to say, God, please forgive me of that sin. And I, I can't just use words, man. There's, there has to be repentance. That repentance is a turning away from that sin, right? Are you with me this morning? I'm almost done. Let's go to the next scripture. Philippians 2, 3 through 11. I got, we got to listen for Paul because this, this is the, the, the best example of selfishness that we can read. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble. Think of, thinking of others is better than yourselves. That's good teaching right there, right? We can just preach right there, right? That's hard. That's hard, though. You hear me? Because Jeffrey wants Jeffrey to shine. And I don't mean that arrogantly. I'm saying all of us are that way. If, if, if we, 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 have to, we have to be careful. Don't look out only for your own interests, but take an interest in others, too. That's hard, too. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Here it is. Though he was God... He didn't think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. 
He took the humble position of a slave, and he was born as a human being. And when he appeared in human form, he, he continued to be humble. That was humility right there. He could have stopped right there. Then he says, he humbled himself in obedience to God, and then he took my place and your place on the cross. He died a criminal's death on a cross. And again, God, God lifts up the humble. Therefore, God elevated him to the place of the highest honor and gave him the name above all names. Did y'all get that? That in the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. In heaven, on earth, and under the earth, and every tongue declared that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. When you're, when you're humble, yeah. You ever read something by yourself and clap for it? <laughs> I did this week. Man, I, man I've read some of this. I was like, that's good. I've read it many times, but it's just kind of, it just you sticks, you know, get it sometimes, right? God lifts up the humble. That's what we're talking about today. Blessed are those who are humble. So, and, and in kind of closing, who modeled humility the best? Of course Jesus did. That's why we read, that's why we read for this scripture, right? That's what Paul's like. Paul's like, here's the best example of humility I can give you guys. Here's what I'm going to teach you. Jesus. Man, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, who we represent, who we surrender our life to, who we follow. Uh, man, if, 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 he, if he willingly and, and lived a humble life, then what, what should be a pattern in my life? What should be an attribute that I have? Humility. No questions asked, right? John the Baptist, in first, I'm not going to read the scripture, I'm going to paraphrase, but when, in, in 1 John 20 through 23, when asked, I love this. When he when asked if he was Elijah or his prophet, you know, he's out ministering, making the way for the Lord, man. And they're like, all right, you know, he, are you, you know, Elijah was a powerful prophet, and they were like, that's you are you Elijah, or and and, and or, or another prophet. And he, his his response was, I am not right. He said that, that that that's not who I am, right? And this reveals John's humility in recognizing and embracing his place as a humble servant rather than just lifting up himself. He had a moment where he could have said, yeah, 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 that's me. He, got, that, 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 he had a moment where, I, where he could have chose pride. But, but listen, listen in John 3.30. John expresses profound humility in saying he must increase and, and I must decrease. How many times have you read that scripture? That's what humility is. He must increase, I must decrease. Are you with me? In closing, worship team, you can go ahead and come on up. Um, pastor Gay, or he's almost a pastor. He is a pastor. He's leading the youth group this summer and doing a phenomenal job, man. And he's going to make a great youth pastor. He uh, spoke this past Wednesday, or I think it was this past Wednesday. A lot's happened since Wednesday. <laughs> but he, he, he talked about uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Was that this past Wednesday or two weeks ago? Not that it matters. Two weeks ago, I think. And he, he talked about it. I love the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Um, and you, and, and, and the paraphrase in this story, man, King Nebuchadnezzar is leading... The, he, 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 I can't say it. Somebody say it for me. Babylon. Bab Babylon. I say it wrong. I can't... Like, my, Babylon. There you go. I want to say Babylon. Babylon. And yeah, don't judge me saying the preacher can't even say Babylon right, okay? All right, all right, I'm just, that's the way, that's who I am. All right, don't, don't, don't go to a different church because of it, okay? All right, Babylon. I got to say it fast. And he's got, you know, he's got these, these Jewish people, these Hebrew people captive there. And he builds a statue of gold and he wants the whole nation of Babylon. Did I say it right? He wants them he wants them to, he puts out a decree, everybody, we're going to gather together, and we're going we're gonna to worship, we're going to bow down, we're going to worship this statue. And these three little Hebrew boys, all right, young guys, all right, they didn't do this because of pride, they do this because of humility, because they, they loved their God, and they were representing their God, and they wanted to be faithful to their God, right? And, it, and, it, and, it, and, it, and you know the story, they didn't bow down, so they're thrown into the fire. Nebuchadnezzar heats up the fire much hotter, right? And he sends them into the fire. And the guards even taking them to the furnace. They're, they're, their ropes are burned and singed, and, 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 and they're burned. 
And then they come out of the fire, and he's looking, while they're in the fire, first of all, he's looking into the fire, and he says, there's not, uh, there's three guys that went in, right? Who went in there with them? Because there's four people in there. And we know that the Holy Spirit was in there with them. He said, I see four people in there. And he came out of the, they come out of the fire, and then they're, they're, there's not anything burned on their bodies. Man, it's a wonderful story. I love it, man. I've read it many times. You've heard it many times. But I just want to, when Gabe was reading this there night, his last, the last line of this just kind of, man, screamed at me. Daniel 3, 28 through 30. This is King, King, the King Nebuchadnezzar's response, this evil king. He says, praise to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He sent his angel to rescue his servants who trusted in him. And they defied the king's command and were willing to die rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. And therefore, I made this decree. If any people, whatever their race or nation or language, speak a word against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they're going to be torn limb from limb and their houses will be turned into heaps of rubble. He needed some growing to do. <laughs> he made some good decisions, but right he says, there's no other God that can rescue like this. And then this last line right here. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to even the higher positions in the province of Babylon. Two, three kids that shouldn't have had any influence in that time and in that place. But because of humility and because of their relationship with God, their desire and their love for God and their faithfulness. Everybody say faithfulness. God rewards faithfulness. Right? What does he do? What happens? In kingdom living, when we are exalted, Jesus is exalted. Right? These boys were exalted to even higher positions in, in this land, in, in this, this horrible place, right? But what happened when they were exalted? Because their representation of Jesus, Jesus was exalted, right? That's what God can do with your life when you live a life of humility, when you live a life of faithfulness, right? It's not, it, when, 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 when you lift, when you're lifted up, when, and, and I'm lifted up, man, it's, 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 it's Jesus doing it, and, and, it's, and we're putting him on a pedestal, Right? That whole nation, man, saw these little these boys make it make a stand for Christ. And it had a huge impact on the king. And, and, and think about the people that, that saw that. Think about the people when even after they come out of fire when, and they were raised to higher positions in Babylon. Jesus was being lifted up, magnified. That, that's, that's what happens when man you live a life of humility. Jesus is put on the pedestal. Right? My spotlight. I'm not gonna shine you in the face, I promise. I've done that before. Listen, humility is okay with Jesus being lifted up. Right? Are you at that place and am I at that place really this morning? But I'm okay with my life nowadays. I'm okay right now. Listen, that that, that, that my life lives and, and portrays who Jesus is, and not not my successes, and not my plans, and not my desires. Am I okay with that? And as you pursue your goals in life, as you climb toward the summit, remember that that humility cuts through the fog of pride. Hear me? It cuts through that fog of pride and it allows us to see God clearly. Right? Uzziah, Uzziah, King Uzziah got, he got caught up in the fog of pride in his life. Right? And he began, he began to get proud. And he lost sight of what really mattered and who really mattered. And who was given the increase. And who was doing the lifting? And who was giving? Who, who was making him powerful? And who was making him successful? Can I tell you, man? He, we, we, we can't get caught up in the fog of pride, right? And this morning, I want to make sure. I want to make sure that, that pride isn't creeping up, or even taking some root in our lives. Either pride is going to take root, or humility is going to take root, man. And, I, and I, I've got. I've got. A, it's my. It's my decision. Here's what pride does. Simple. I do dumb illustrations, but just stick with me. All right. Pride. All right. Pride. This is a good spotlight. I need it because my dog, my dog chases invisible things or not. So, and I got to make sure it's invisible. It's not something real. So I got a spotlight in my backyard. All right. Pride lifts Jesus up. I'm, excuse me. I'm sorry. Wait, wait, wait. Don't clap for that. That was wrong. Hold on, Matt. Humility 
lifts Jesus up. Now you clap. There you go, man. Right? Humility lifts Jesus up. Pride, pride lifts, pride lifts me up. Right? What, 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 what can, who am I? Who are you? Who am I? And who are you? Right? Who, like, really? Who am I? Who are you? What, what am I? Who am I without Jesus? Who are you without Jesus? Who are you without Jesus? You're nothing, man. What kind of impact were you making? You can, you can, you can, you can earn some money. You can have beautiful things. You can even have a beautiful family, man. But can I just tell you, there's eternity at the end of this. There's eternity at the end of this, right? Right? Can I just tell you, you can I tell you again, you're valuable to the kingdom of God. You know what? There's people that's going to be in heaven or hell because of whether or not I lift Jesus up or not. Will I live a life of humility or whether or not I lift me up. If I'm lifting me up and I'm putting me on a pedestal, and I can make decisions, every decision in my life, because it because it comforts me, and because it because it lifts me up or gives me pleasure, I gotta say no to some things. I gotta say no to some sins. I got I got I gotta do some things that's uncomfortable because I need to lift Jesus up in my life, right? Like how many how many ministers and and churches and lately I mean lately have we seen fall? And be destroyed. I'm talking about famous pastors. I'm talking about local. How many politicians have we seen fall and disgrace themselves? How many people, how many, how many marriages have been destroyed because, because, because of pride? How many friendships have been destroyed simply because of pride? How many families have been destroyed and separated because, because they was right and they was right? And nobody would say, it's not about me. Can I just tell you, it's just God, God wants to take this, this church and many other churches to different places because, man, the harvest is plentiful. It's ready. It's ripe. And can I just tell you, man, we, we've, got, we've got to be people that live lives of humility, right? We've got to get pride out of the way so God can work through us. God can flow through us so that we can, we can put the spotlight on him. And we've got to get me out of the way, right? We've got to get me out of the way.